Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly. I am an oncology and lymphedema specialist and physical therapist. In a recent video, I shared about new and exciting findings in lymphatic drainage and how this may change from the way we do traditional lymphatic drainage. This research is being done by the ALERT program in Australia, and it very well may change the way that we treat lymphedema. To see an explanation of this, I would highly encourage you to go check out that video first, which I'll link up above and also down below. And I'll also link ALERT's program information to learn more in depth below. But in this video, I will be doing a lymphatic drainage routine for moderate to severe leg lymphedema or swelling that someone can follow along with based on this information. If you like a printout with steps and a diagram, you can find one on my website, which I'll link up above and the description box down below. Now, this routine is different than the other videos I have of traditional lymphatic drainage on my channel. And know that this is a modified way that is not yet being taught by lymphedema certification schools to the masses yet. So please continue to work with your lymphedema therapist for personalized guidance. If you want a video of traditional lymphatic drainage, check out a playlist full of options on my channel, which I'll link down below. Before I begin, I want to take a second and give a massive thank you to the ALERT program, not only for their dedication to this research and passion to improving lymphedema treatment, but also a thank you for providing me with slides and graphics for this video series to be able to share with you all. Please see the description box down below again to, for links for the ALERT program content and also their publication. Now, I explained this more in depth in the video I mentioned prior. But if we take a quick look at the summary view, you can see here that the percentage of individuals that had lymph fluid drained to each area region of the lymph nodes, with a majority having fluid moving still to the lymph nodes in the groin on the same side of surgery, also to the opposite side or opposite groin from surgery, and then also behind the knee. Others had fluid moving to various areas as well, especially with that moderate to severe group. They had fluid moving to the gluteal or the bottom area, around to various areas of the thigh, and just a little bit or a few had some still going up to the armpit. So we're going to go through a modification based on this information, so be sure to follow along. So for lymphatic drainage, we're going to talk about doing, like I said, more for mild to severe lymphedema. I think the best way to do this is laying down. If someone has a bolster to put their leg up on, that works great. I'm gonna do it semi-sitting up just so it's easier to see. And again, I know this isn't easy for everyone to reach their foot or to do this on their own. So if someone has someone to assist, they can also follow along with the same steps. But this is to give you an idea of what direction we wanna move the fluid to or towards based on the alert research. So it can be either leg, it can be both legs. I'm just gonna do it on the leg here on my left so it's easier to see but again modify this for whatever works for you so the first thing we want to do is to work on deep breathing first and so we can still do our deep breaths as we would putting our hand on our upper abdomen taking a nice big deep breath in feeling your belly expand into your hand and then out through your mouth and then we'll move into another area big breath in and out. Lower abdomen, breath in and out. And then one more big breath in and out. Good, then we still wanna stimulate the lymph nodes in the area. So we have the lymph nodes in the groin, in the armpit, in the head and neck area. It's still, even though this is not part of the routine, you can still you know, do circles around the head and neck area and the armpits. For this routine to modify, we're just gonna focus on the groin. And so right where that sitting crease is, again, this might be easier laying down, um, doing small circles, eight to 10, right in that area. It's always best to do this directly on the skin whenever possible. That's the best way to do this whole routine. 
Now I have other videos on my channel for the traditional that I've done one sitting up. I've done one laying down on my back with the bolster and this one will be modified. So again, there's, there's many ways to do it. Whatever helps you reach to as many areas as possible. So after we've done circles here, we're going to start with the routine. Now, if someone has truncal lymphedema or swelling here, we still want to work and it stimulates lymph nodes. But we found in that research is that a lot of the fluid still goes to the lymph nodes right on that same side that someone had lymph nodes removed or surgery or the side that's affected. And so instead of always just pushing upwards to the armpit, a little, a few number, uh, a small percentage of people, excuse me, still had fluid move up there, but not a large amount. So if we're gonna modify this and shorten it, we're just gonna actually just stimulate this area. So you have fluid in the pelvis, we might actually work down towards those lymph nodes, especially if it's below the belly button, kind of the lower pelvis, really working right in that region, doing small strokes, encouraging that fluid to move towards the lymph nodes in that groin area. If you have fluid around the back, you have lymph nodes in the glute, you might be able to reach and do massage to those areas or massage towards the lymph nodes. Now again, you also saw that some of the fluid, a moderate amount of people had fluid moved to the other groin, so you're still welcome to move that fluid across to the other side, doing nice, firm, but slow strokes across. So whatever, again, you have time for, whatever you wanna spend your time on, and again, wherever your fluid is, you can modify that. Now we're gonna work down the leg. So we're gonna work in sections still, starting more proximal or closer to the hip, and then working our way to the foot. So if we think about kind of the hip and the upper thigh, we're gonna use our whole hand, as much surface area as possible, and we're going to do firm, slow strokes towards that groin area. I try to use both hands if we can. Again, you can do this sitting or laying. Laying is nice because you have your leg up, um, gravity's helping. But whatever helps you reach, working the fluid towards the front of that hip, right in that groin area. Now, if we looked at that picture we talked about before, if you saw my other video, there are also lymph nodes behind the thigh in the back. So you can still just work up the back of the thigh as well as in the front, make sure you get the inner thigh. A lot of fluid likes to sit there. And now with moderate severe lymphedema, you, you may or may not have fibrosis or thickened or hardened areas. So if you find an area that's a little bit thicker, I like to stop and sort of knead dough with the tissue, really to start to soften that fibrosis, spending a couple minutes on that time, really working that area out, and then continuing on with lymphatic drainage. So again, take the time that you need and the time that you may have, or therapists, spend the time that you have with your patients and really working on the areas that you need. So making sure you get the back, making sure you get the sides, and making sure you get the front. Three to four, three to five strokes in each area, as much time as you'd like working everything up. Then we're gonna work on the knee. The front of the knee, I like to work around the kneecap, really trying to get around those crevices where fluid likes to sit on the sides of the knee. And remember, a lot of fluid moves through the pathway behind the knee. So really working that area a lot, I think can be really important to try to make sure that the fluid is incurred in the pathways that it naturally wants to move. You're more likely to get fluid out of the lower leg if it can follow in its natural pathway. So working a lot or doing circles behind the knee Slow and firm, doesn't have to be deep. And then after we've done that, we're gonna to work to the lower leg. So working from the ankle to the knee, Again, or whatever you can reach. If you can only reach part of it, just do what you can do. I think one of the other videos I have, I was sitting up with my leg crossed, might work, or if you have help and someone's assisting you, they can be doing the same thing. Really trying to get slow, firm strokes, encouraging the fluid up. Make sure we get all sides of the leg. Try to use as much of your hand as possible, not just your fingers. And when you're in the back, just try to go straight up to behind the knee where those lymph nodes are. And again, spend more time in areas that you feel are thicker or firmer, really soften those with that kneading of the dough, the tissue and then moving on. 
And after we've done that lower leg, then we can move on to the foot area. So taking our whole hand, crossing your leg over you can, or if you can't reach the foot, you can skip this part too. But we're massaging the top of the foot, including the toes. And I also like to make sure we try to get around those bone areas, those bony areas, the ankles called malleoli. On the inside and the outside, that's where a lot of fluid likes to sit and pool because there's space for it to sit. So try to get around those crevices and around that tendon in the back of your ankle, the Achilles tendon. Spending the time that you need and then you can also work into your toes. Some people just do all the toes at once. Some people like to do individual toes with their fingers, whatever works for you. But once you've spent as much time as you can on the foot, then we're gonna work our way back up to the leg. So again, same thing, firm, slow strokes up the leg, stopping for any firm areas, kind of soften or knead those areas for a couple minutes or whatever you have time for, and then moving on. And after you've done three or four, making sure you get all areas, I'm going back to the knee, really working behind the knee where we know a lot of fluid moves through. I would spend more time there and then also working around your kneecap, around those crevices as well. And then we'll finish with the upper leg, the thigh. Same thing, working straight up. It's in the photo below, or the picture before, or if you watch other video, there's a lot of lymph nodes and pathways in that thigh, in the back of the thigh, side of the thigh, even into the glute, and then in the front, of course, as well. So either or everyone's gonna be a little bit different and we don't know unless you've had your own imaging done. So it's really good just to make sure we're doing all areas if you have the time. And if you don't, just do some straight up because we still know a good percentage goes right to the front in that groin area. Working through, stopping for fibrotic areas, working in if you have pockets of swelling or more lobular spots, spend more time there. Everything back to the front of the groin area or up the back. And once you've done the whole leg, if you still have fluid here, you have time to do it. Maybe you don't, maybe that's all you have, wonderful. If you do, we can still spend more time moving across to the other side where more fluid gets taken. The one thing I'd modify, if you have time, you can still go back up to the armpit like we do with traditional lymphatic drainage. But based on the research findings, that's not where a majority of people have pathways. So let's modify it and focus on the areas that we know most. And that's across the other side, right in front and behind the knee, and then maybe into the thigh as well. So that would be a modification, a shortened way to do lymphatic drainage based on this research. But I would, if you have time, finish with a few deep breaths. So putting the hand on the belly, gently press in, big breath in and out. Move over, breath in and out. Down lower, breath in and out. And then last corner, breath in and out. And that's a lymphatic drainage routine that is an option that can be modified based on the ALERT program's research findings. Again, this is not a traditional lymphatic drainage routine, but based on their findings, how we might be able to modify, shorten, and really focus in on the areas that we see are most important to help with lymphatic drainage and reducing lymphedema. I hope you all found this video helpful. Again, check out the description box down below for content and links related to alert program information and as well as a playlist for other lymphatic drainage videos. Hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.